Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie and with Karen Mills, we not only have the great joy of being the co-conductors of our church choir, Coriolis, but we'll also be your service leaders this morning. We do hope that you feel welcome. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual questing individuals join in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including diversity in beliefs, from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, the pursuit of justice, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on traditional Cree lands that are now part of Treaty 6 territory and shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. If you are new here, we invite you to stay and join us for coffee following the service to get to know us a little bit better. If you haven't already done so, I also invite you to visit our information desk, which is just outside these doors in the lobby. And so as we begin our service, we have a prelude composed by a local composer. words are by Lynn Cox. Come, you accidental pilgrims. You who find yourself on a journey of surprise and wonder. Come, you who emerge into this place as an act of liberation. Come, you who seek a life of mindfulness and a place to test your thoughts. Come, you who bring hearts of all kinds, heavy hearts, rusty hearts, hearts broken, open to revelation, hearts full of love to share. Come you who seek courage, and you who have more courage than you realize. Come you who have been in a bubble, and you who are poised for transformation. We begin our story again, gathering courage, love, mindfulness, and a sense of purpose. We gather as people of all ages, of different abilities, different backgrounds, and different perspectives. We share a commitment to encourage and challenge one another to spiritual growth. This path we ask much of you. Let us move forward with love. Let us move forward with anticipation for one another. Let us move forward knowing that we are not alone. Whoever you are, whatever your gifts, you are welcome to join this journey. I would invite Donna Hammer to come forward and light our chalice this morning. We come together this morning because when within us there is something that knows we need more than we can find in our aloneness. We know instinctively in the depths of ourselves, that we need others for this journey of life, even though we also guard our independence and individuality quite jealously. 
So let us celebrate all that makes us unique, yet also all that makes us one. And let us dream dreams of all that we can do together. Good morning. It's time for our first hymn, but it has a little explanation with it. Our hymns this morning are a little bit different than normal in that they are congregation and choir combined. So we get to make a huge, great noise together. And they're by a UU composer named Jason Shelton. Jason was here in last spring doing a workshop. He was the music minister at the UU church in Nashville and has decided to freelance, as he calls it now. And his mission is to make interesting, meaningful, but singable music. So we're going to put it to the test this morning. To give a little help, it's on the one-page handout that I hope everybody received when they came in. If not, please go grab one. This first song is Lift Up the Gates. The choir will sing the first verse through once so that you kind of get the swing of things. And then we're going to go back and repeat, start again, and ask you to join us when we start again in that first verse, and we'll sing it through, and it should be spectacular. Every Thursday night, you could come and do that. (laughs) Every week, we take some time in our service to light candles of care and connection, to acknowledge that we are not alone on this journey, and that we do need one another, and that we appreciate one another, and to take this time to share those good points in our lives, those challenging times, and a recognition that this community is important. If you have cares, concerns, joys that you would like to light a candle for, I'd invite you to come forward now.
please respond after each phrase with the words, we travel together. From the busyness of every day, we gather once a week to remember who we are, to dream of who we might become. We travel together. As companions on this journey, we share the milestones we meet along the way. Individual moments of joy and sorrow become shared moments of comfort and celebration. We travel this road together. We share this journey of, across differences of belief and opinion because we value diversity and because we care for one another. We travel this road together. Today, as we take the next steps, let us notice our fellow travelers, the burdens that they carry, the song that they inspire. We travel this road together. As we gather in beloved community, let us open the holy havens of our hearts. Let us share the sacred places of our souls, for we are pilgrims who share a common path. We travel this road together. I will read the plain text, if you would please read the bold. Blessed are you who can question your own assumptions and listen with an open mind. You will receive new insights beyond your imagination. Blessed are you who suffer the attacks of others to stand up for what is right. You will not be alone. Blessed are you who build friendships as well as justice. Even when you lose an issue, you will have strengthened the foundation of your community. Blessed are you who take delight in people. You will not be bored in meetings. <laughs> Blessed are you who agitate the placid waters of complacency. You will create grace in the inertia of privilege and will know the thrill of riding the servant of change. Blessed are you who lead with enthusiasm and confidence, resisting the temptation to shame the apathetic or self-absorbed. You will inspire curiosity and hope in others. Blessed are you who play as well as work. You will have more fun, feel more energy, Blessed are you who ask for help in your role as leaders. You will find teachers at every turn, and your work will remain interesting and alive. Blessed are you who, when wrongfully attacked, to find safe outlets for your righteous rage. Your mind will be clear, your decisions strategic. And your progress will not be derailed by the backlash of the fearful. Blessed are you who do not demonize your opponents. Your eyes and your hearts will be open. That's a hard one. <laughs> Blessed are you who sing and dance. You will find energy and joy to live you on your journey. Blessed are you who offer thanks and praise fivefold for every critic. Your children will want to visit Athena and Rome. People will want to serve the more committees. And critics will be interested in your opinions. That's another good one. <laughs> Blessed are you who study the rhythms of history. You will have knowledge with which to shape the future. Blessed are you who work in coalition rather than in principled isolation. You will meet great people, learn things you didn't realize you needed to know, and have partners for the journey when you are in need or in need. Blessed are you who volunteer to be secretary and take really good minutes. Your words will become history, and your efforts will move steadily forward. Blessed are you who discover, train, and encourage young leaders. You will see your work expand and grow beyond your time and talent. 
Oh, especially blessed are you who can change your mind. You are still alive. Blessed are you who will not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. You will see progress in your lifetime. Blessed are you with an active spiritual life. You will find perspective and comfort in times of loss and betrayal, and will rise without cynicism to meet the challenges of the new day. Blessed are you who live from a place of gratitude. So now we're going to share our abundance. So each week, we take a collection to support the work of our church. We also share half of the unidentified cash with outside organizations. If you need to receive a tax receipt for the donation you put in the collection plate, then you need to use an envelope, and the ushers have them. They're usually in the uh, hymnals, but we don't have hymnals today. So you can ask an usher for an envelope if you like. If you don't use a check or an envelope, then all the cash, half of that cash, will be split with the group that we're supporting this month. This month, we're giving half of our unidentified donations to the International Council of Unitarian Universalists. You can find out more about them in a little display that's set up in the lobby, and I think you should read up on them. They're a very interesting organization. We will now take an offering for the work of the church. Let us serve. Let us honor. One another, yes, let us love. Let us serve. Let us honor one another, yes, so let us love. Let us serve, let us honor one another, yes, so let us love one another. Serve one another, honor one another, as equals hand in hand. Love one another, serve one another. Honor one another, that's how we understand. Love one another, serve one another, honor one another, as equals hand in hand. Love one another, serve one another, honor one another, that's how we understand. Love one another, serve one another, Honor one another, as humble hand in hand. Love one another, serve one another. Honor one another, that's how we understand. Let us love, let us love, love, love. Let us love. Please join in singing as we accept the offering from you I receive. to give you a little context before our next reading. Um, There might be some locations and some words that don't make sense, and I think it helps if you understand them. So in Hinduism, Shiva resided at the summit of the Kailash mountain, 
that's referred to, and where he sat in a state of meditation. Mount Kailash is also considered sacred in Buddhism, Jainism, and Bon, which is a religion native to Tibet. And the Bodh Gaya is a spot in India where Gautama Buddha is said to have obtained enlightenment. It's a pilgrimage, like a trek to Mount Kailash or perhaps Bodh Gaya, but it's life itself, the whole thing, every moment. On the high passes of Mount Kailash, pilgrims hope for a kind of death, a rebirth of spirit. And it's not a bad thing to go there, do that, if time and money allow. But what of this journey of every day? And what can we learn from the pilgrims there? They, lightheaded in the altitude, gasping in amazement at the alteration of clear, bright sunlight and wind-blown snows amid the vast, craggy highlands. It seems to me a wind blows from Mount Kailash or somewhere, and so we pilgrims of sidewalk and parking lot are sometimes taken unaware, not so much by wind-blown snows as by apples in the supermarket or sunshine through the trees next to the school. We gasp in amazement, lifted from our everyday selves for no reason at all. Let it be a pilgrimage each day, and may our journeys all be blessed. I think everyone who is considering committing to a partnership should have to travel together first. You learn a lot about yourself and the other person. You see reactions under stress, tiredness. You find out if someone is more comfortable observing for the sidelines or if they like to dive right in. You learn about priorities and values. You get to share wonder and amazement. You also see those little things that might turn out to be big things later, like what they think makes a good souvenir or really how picky they are about clean socks and underwear. I know the first big trip I took with Andrew, that was the guy that just did the canvas talk, and I uh, was a learning experience. We went to the Maritimes to meet his family before we were married, and very quickly I learned that we had very different trip planning styles. He planned a lot, and I didn't. In many areas of my life I am almost hyper-organized, but traveling is not one of them. I'm perfectly happy to buy a last-minute ticket show up and go with whatever's going on. Andrew, on the other hand, actually produced a timeline graph <laughs> showing locations, plane and ferry connections, and suggested tour outings. The graph was accompanied by a list of all the important contact address and phone numbers. When I first saw it, I laughed. But when we arrived at the Digby Ferry Terminal to see the line of people being told that the next three ferries were already sold out and we got to bypass them because Andrew had made reservations, my laughter switched to relief and appreciation. My appreciation also grew throughout the trip because it became more and more apparent that he had made the plans based on questions we had discussed before the trip. What did I want to see? What was I curious about? How much time did I want to spend with family, and when might I need some time alone? He knew I was nervous about meeting his family, so had taken that into consideration. He was also excited to show me some of his favorite childhood haunts, so he'd factored that in. Because I didn't want to do the planning and was happy to go with the flow, our two styles worked out. There was another piece that made that trip work. We agreed on the destination. Now, that sort of sounds simple, but I don't mean just the physical location. I mean the reason for going and what we wanted out of the trip. We were going to meet his family because it was important for us both to know uh, that they saw us as a couple and that they thought that was a good thing. I, of course, also wanted to meet Andrew's family and the people that knew him best and, you know, perhaps hear a few juicy stories from his youth. I have to admit that on that trip, I was so focused on my own nerves that I didn't realize until later one of the other things that is such an important lesson about travel, and that's the kindness of strangers. No journey is ever a solitary adventure. Even when we're traveling alone, we can't help but be impacted by those around us. 
I was recently reminded of that lesson. Andrew and I were lucky enough to go to Morocco and Portugal over Christmas and we first experienced the kindness of a stranger when we were in the Lisbon airport and stuck in the middle of a really long customs line and worrying that we were not going to make our connecting flight. And a man who had sat across from us on the airplane saw that we were worried and flagged a passing airport employee, spoke to him in Portuguese, which I have to say is one of the most impenetrable languages I've ever encountered. And within seconds, we were whisked to another line in another part of the airport and got right through and made our connection. And so it was perhaps a 30-second conversation by that stranger, but it saved us hours of travel delays and anxiety. When we arrived in Porto a couple weeks later, we were again gifted by the kindness of a stranger. We arrived on December 23rd, and we were booked to spend Christmas at an Airbnb. When we reached our apartment, our host greeted us with a small homemade Christmas cake because she didn't want us to be so far from home and not have any Christmas. It was such a thoughtful, caring gesture, and it completely changed the way that we saw the whole city and our whole trip. We not only appreciated the kindness, but we came to feel a sense of community with the world and how great it is to connect and share experiences. And nowhere did that become more true than when we took a bus tour through Morocco. On the first day, 39 strangers boarded. One week later, a little community said their goodbyes. We were a very unlikely collection from Canada, the U.S., Australia, Singapore, and Lebanon. We were from very different cultures. We spoke different languages. We had dif different backgrounds. And yet we found that we had a lot more in common then we had differences. And seeing the experience of the trip through each other's eyes made it so much richer. We're embarking on a journey as a congregation right now. We're about to explore new territory in the search for a new minister. This month's theme, what does it mean to be people of the journey, got me reflecting on my own journeys, clearly, and thinking about where we're going as UCE. As we learn from the Beatitudes reading, there are many different types of people and many different ways to share gifts. And so it made me wonder, who will want to dive into the thick of things and who's going to be more comfortable observing from the sidelines? Who will be anxious about the unknown and who will be excited about the new territory ahead? How will we react under stress? How will we be kind to one another? How might we be gifted with kindness of strangers? And who's going to do the timeline graph? <laughs> Most importantly, though, I wonder, how can we share and build community through this journey so that it is a rich and positive experience for everyone? I have some ideas, but I certainly don't have all the answers to those questions. And I don't expect that you will either right now. But what I do expect is that you'll have more questions. So to help the board and all of us plan, I'm going to move us into our community question portion of the service. I invite you to form small groups and brainstorm about these two questions. It's a bonus day today. You get two questions. What questions do you have about UCE's future? And what questions should we, the board and the congregation, be asking as we prepare for the next step in our journey? So what questions do you have? about UCE's future, and what questions should we be asking as we prepare for the next step in our journey. We're going to come around and pass out sticky notes. If you feel comfortable, write those questions on this sticky note, one question per note, and we put up some chart paper in the um, side there and the back there. And so I'll give you about five minutes to discuss. I'll ring the chimes once. That will signal post-it time. And then I'll ring the chimes a second time to bring us back together before we enter meditation.
church questions are there or there. It doesn't matter. Rest assured, this is not the only time we will get to discuss these questions. If you think of more through the service, you are welcome to grab more post-it notes and add to the collection. And if you think of more after that, you are welcome to email them to me or pop them in the suggestion box just outside the door. Now I invite you to... Get ready for a time of meditation, good support for your back, nice open heart, a few deep breaths, and if it helps to focus, close your eyes. Let us enter into the spirit of meditation. Much of our human struggle is with what we do not know or understand. It's often difficult not to want answers or even more difficult not to think we already have them. May we experience what we do not know, not as an individual failure, but as an invitation to community. May we seek not the true answers so much as the true questions, knowing that true questions make of our lives meaningful, even if sometimes restless journeys. May we be grateful for the restless voices in our communities. Let us take a few moments of silence to listen for the restless voices within ourselves. May we be good company to one another in our questions and our journey. I invite you now to sing our second hymn. It's another one that's on the flip side of your sheet. Uh, this time I'll ask you to stand first. We'll again have the choir sing it the first verse through once and then start again and invite you to join us.
invited to come on Thursdays. <laughs> the piece that I didn't tell you about the music is that Jason Shelton is offering it to all congregations free of charge. So he's written about eight types of these pieces and uh, yeah, it's an incredible gift to all the congregation. Our closing words today are a prayer for travelers. This is a prayer for all the travelers For the ones who start out in beauty, who fall from grace, who step gingerly looking for the way back, and for those who are born into the margins, who travel from one liminal space to another, crossing boundaries in search of center. This is a prayer for the one whose births are a passing from darkness to darkness, who all their lives are drawn toward the light and keep moving and for those whose journeys are a winding road that begins and ends in the same place, though only when the journey is completed do they finally know where they are. For all the travelers, young and old, aching and joyful, weary and full of life, the ones who are here, the ones who are not here, the ones who are like you, and they're all like you, and the ones who are different, for in some ways we each travel alone. This is a prayer for traveling mercies and sure-footedness, for clear vision and bread for your body and spirit, for water, for your safe arrival, and for everyone you see along the way. Blessed be. And because you're such good singers, you get to join in the postlude too. Although you didn't know it, but the words for the postlude are actually under the sharing our abundance section and you heard the choir sing it during the sharing our abundance it's uh, kind of a march tempo Uh, it's the let us love let us serve let us honor Um, there was a march a rally uh, against hate in nashville and the youth group at the unitarian universalist church of nashville really wanted to be part of the march and they really wanted to be part of the demonstration but they really wanted some, something positive to say. And they didn't want to have anti-messages. They wanted to have pro-something messages. And so Jason took them out into the parking lot of the church and started them marching around the parking lot and said, okay, what do you want to say? What's important? And what they came up with was this song. He kind of put it to a bit of a New Orleans march tempo and so it's got three parts there's a lower or a bass part that just goes let us love let us serve let us honor one another yes and so you'll hear the basses sing that part first if that part resonates with you sing along then there's a middle part that says love one another serve one another honor one another as equals hand in hand Love one another, honor one another, serve one another. That's how we understand. And then a third death cant. So if you're feeling light and airy this morning, this might be for you. And it's just let us love, love, love. So join in when you feel comfortable doing so with whatever part you feel comfortable joining in with. If you want to switch in the middle, that's absolutely fine. If you want to make up a fourth part, power to you. And I think this will work better if we all stand 
And if you snap on two and four. Let us love, let us serve, let us honor one another. Yes, oh, let us love, oh, let us serve, oh, let us honor one another. Yes, oh, let us love. Oh, let us serve, oh, let us honor one another, yes, oh, let us love, oh, let us serve, oh, let us honor <coughs> one another, yes, oh, let us love, love one another, oh, let us serve one another, oh, let us honor one another, oh, let us love one another, oh, let us love one another, oh, let us serve one another. Please join hands and let us sing Carry the Flame, and then we will have some announcements. 